Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about using Snapchat for business in 2019 and beyond and we'll talk about if it's a good idea to add this into your content plan and what you should do if you are going to use Snapchat for your business. So let's get into this video. So this was a question asked by Tabitha. She has a staffing company and so she commented below on one of the other videos and had asked what do you think about Snapchat for business? So a few things about Snapchat. And before we begin, I just wanted to mention that this is the Digital Marketing Madman channel. My name is Brandon Brashears, and I make daily digital marketing videos that help you to increase your business and reach more of your clients and customers. So the question here is Snapchat. Is it a good idea? What should you do to start it? And really, what are the best uses for Snapchat when you have it in use for a business? So I think that there is a few things about Snapchat that make it interesting and a few things that make it not so interesting. So um, from a perspective of content, it is a platform that you have to be very active in because you don't have a history of content that is sitting there. So if you've never used Snapchat before, go to the App Store, download it. You can see what the content looks like, but it's only there for 24 hours. Since it's only there for 24 hours, it means that you have to constantly be updating it. Now, I think that you can build out some really cool content types for Snapchat, but I don't think that it's going to be a primary channel for you. Now, Tabitha had mentioned that she is active on Facebook and LinkedIn and also Instagram more often. So I think that if you have, I, the first question that you need to ask yourself, number one, is are your customers or clients on Snapchat? Is this what they are using? And is this one of their primary channels where they get content? So here's some interesting facts about Snapchat users to see maybe if you think your customers and your clients are going to be on Snapchat. Number one, 71% of Snapchat users are under the age of 34. It's definitely a younger demographic, although um, Snapchat has had, it started out for sure being a younger platform and um, a lot more older people have jumped on too, but it's definitely a place where millennials hang out and you need to keep that in mind. Another quick thing to consider is that they have what they are reporting about, um, as 188 million daily users, which as far as social media platforms go, it's not a tremendously heavily used platform. And actually when Instagram came out with stories, that really cut into Snapchat's popularity and usability. There's, I think, a few reasons for that. Snapchat isn't tremendously helpful to have as a way to search for other users and other types of content. They did add a search feature to Snapchat, um, but it is a little bit difficult to get discovered on there just for the reason that it's not primarily used as a way to search out for things. Snapchat is used primarily for engaging with your friends and family and, and people that you are following and not, not even so much friends and family, but mostly friends, right? And so it's a, a good communication medium for that reason. People also follow influencers and other people like that. But in general, it's not the same as Instagram where there's hashtags and searches and you can follow hashtags on Instagram and you can follow hashtags on stories. And that way you can keep up with new new content that's coming out and it really is more engaging for discovery. Not the case with Snapchat, but that being the case, there are some potential opportunities there. So I think here are a few suggestions on how to use Snapchat if you are going to be using it for your business. Suggestion number one is that you use Snapchat as an engagement platform to build depth of context. And I would say that having really high quality curated content on Snapchat is probably not the way to go. You're gonna to wanna to kind of use Snapchat as a behind the scenes platform and um, really help people to get a greater depth of knowledge when it comes to who is in your business and um, what you guys are all about. So, you know, using Snapchat to show stuff that's going on in the office, um, content, I would make it all natively on the phone and I would make it on the fly so that I didn't spend too much time really creating professional content. Now, if you did want to up your, your quality level, I would suggest using a camera like the GoPro Hero 7 because you can uh, shoot in portrait mode and you need your content to be in portrait for that. But in general, you're not going to be using Snapchat a ton to be found and to get your brand name out there. 
But if you do have people that are asking for it or people that you know are spending time on there, if you use Snapchat as another medium to get in front of the people that you already have on your list. So use it to take that next step of engagement. So it's not top of funnel content, use it for middle of funnel content. And if you're not sure what that is, here is a click on this card up here, I'm go over the funnel process and how to use top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel content. But really with Snapchat, I would focus on middle of funnel content. So it's evaluation type things, right? Also, if you're going to use it to build out, you know, brand um, awareness and you want people inside of your company to be keeping up with what's going on, that might also be a good use of Snapchat for your brand. In general, though, the content that you're producing, I really think it doesn't have to be so polished and professional. And actually, the more that you use Snapchat to show your personality, your core values, and help people just to get to know you better, right, so that they can take the next step to conversion, I think that that works really well. Now, one thing that is interesting about Snapchat is since it does disappear after 24 hours, you can make offers that are very time sensitive. So if you wanted people to be rapidly consuming offers and seeing them, then they know that they're gonna have to act quickly because it's going away in 24 hours. So that might be an alternative um, way to beat do some bottom of funnel marketing if you wanted to be converting your Snapchat followers into other action. You can also direct your Snapchat followers to other mediums too by saying, hey, we have new posts on Instagram or on Facebook. But for the most part, I would keep it all natively inside of uh, Snapchat. And as much as possible, just really use it to show personality, to give greater context, to give greater depth of context of what your company's all about and help to move the relationship forward no matter you know what it is you're trying to sell. So think about the end result. What is it that you're trying to sell? Um, if you're like in a service business, showing what you do on a daily basis to kind of give people context for what it is that you do and, and what you're all about. I will say this though, I know that most businesses on Snapchat are probably not doing Snapchat right because Snapchat was not essentially made for business, right? It was actually the anti-ad network. There was no way for people to find other people. It was very difficult to spam. If you had a big list, you could take that big list and send them over to Snapchat, but that was about it. So that being the case, that's how people approached the, the platform to begin with, and it's important to consider that. And so moving forward, it's just difficult for advertisers to jump in there. Now, if you are thinking about, should I do Snapchat or should I do Instagram? My suggestion would be Instagram because you can create ads for Instagram. You can drive actions. They have really, really creative um, ad types that you can use. You can send traffic to offsite websites with it. You can have people engage with messages. You can have very detailed targeting because Instagram and Facebook have the same ad network. So Instagram for that reason is just light years ahead of Snapchat. And it's pretty clear that I think that Instagram is going to always be the winner when it comes to Snapchat and Instagram for stories and, and content that's like that. But you also have the additional curated type content on Instagram that lets people follow you. So you get both of those benefits. You get people that are looking for that 24 hour really relevant content that they have to consume or else they're gonna you know, go away or um, also the content that's curated and, and sitting there. Instagram's also pushing really hard on Instagram TV. So um, it would be interesting to see what happens with that, but that's longer form video content that I think will have some benefit. I was actually engaging with some posts that were Instagram TV posts today that were really high quality and I, I thought it worked really well. So. As far as platforms go, I think that Instagram is probably the better platform. If you just want to be on Snapchat for having an extra channel that you're exposing your brand to your clients and prospective clients, make sure that there's a large number that it will be beneficial for you. And then probably have crossover between the content that you create on Instagram stories and the content that you create in Snapchat. And it really just depends on your business, but making sure that you're creating content that is relevant to middle of funnel type activities. I think that that is going to really, really help you to grow your business with this activity. Now, Snapchat does have ads and I have only run one ad ever before. It wasn't wildly successful um, in general, just because the targeting was not right. The thing about if Instagram and Facebook is their targeting is so amazing and 
you really can't beat their contextual targeting when it comes to display ads, which is essentially what Facebook and Instagram are. They're display ad networks. And you're able to use the content that you have to warm up the traffic. Think about, though, if you're on Snapchat and you're going to be using the ad platform, what is the kind of way to get... It's, it's really just a pattern interrupt. It's not even necessarily something... If you look at all the ads on there, I was just on Snapchat, and I saw an AT&T ad, and it was completely an interrupt between the content and the stories, and there was no context, really, for why I was seeing this ad, other than they just wanted to run an ad roll. So in general, I think that Snapchat, if you're going to do ads, I would make it not so curated and polished and make it look like an actual piece of content instead of making it look like a really finished ad that you're just trying to interrupt and capture their attention because they're not going to want to see it in general. That's not what they're on Instagram for. I'm sorry, that's not what they're on Snapchat for. They're there to connect with their friends. So think about that for sure. Now, an alternative to doing story ads on Snapchat is that you can also, there's actually four ad types now. And there's also a bunch of different um, types of targeting and, and things like that. So let's jump into the computer here. I'll show you really quick what's up with the targeting and then you can kind of see if you think it would work well. All right, so here we are into the Snapchat Ads Manager. When you sign up for Ads Manager, you have the basic one, which is, fine if you don't really want to have greater control. I would just go to this advanced ads manager. I'll show you why here in just a second, but you do that by clicking this button up here. So once you're into the ads manager, we have, it's very similar to Facebook here where you have awareness, consideration, conversion. So you got the different funnel levels, right? So this actually does have some pretty new, unique, um, ideas. I mean, like it probably would, since you have all mobile users, app installs, wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, especially if it's really targeted towards interest. But in general, I would say most of the time you'd probably be looking at catalog sales. So I'd be interested to see what you would get with this versus other channels. Um, just in general, it's not a super popular channel, so you probably have a lot less, less competition here um, in general. But once you choose an objective, let's just do website traffic. Um, Spend cap, you can do as little as $20 a day in ad spend, um, and you can set a lifetime budget if you want to, and then you can build your ad sets. So with this specific objective that I chose, I only have two types of ads. We have collection ad or snap ads. We also have this here, um, which is a story ad. This is going to be an awareness type ad, and then a filter, which is also an awareness type ad. And unless you're a large company, these two are not going to be super effective. Um, and then it's interesting to have their placements here so you can run on publisher stories or user stories. That's really interesting. I think probably people consuming inside of publisher stories, that would be definitely more expected as far as like interruption for a, a curated ad in general. So I think that that would be an interesting, be interesting to test both and see what the results were, were based on what you know, was working for you. Um, always be tracking your pixels uh, and, and pixeling your user data and engagement data because it's important to know who's engaging and be able to retarget with them later on. We have targeting um, that's based on location. We have age demographics, um, operating system, which is cool. Interest audiences that we have here. We got lifestyles, shoppers, viewers, visitors. Um, again, it's super broad and I would say that in general, you're going to need a very broad offering unless you're doing retargeting. These targeting of visitors that are based on placements and um, actual data of people showing up into places, that's interesting. Um, these actually look pretty interesting from a perspective of like an auto dealer that you could use pretty well. Um, but definitely go through and figure out who your client is and your client avatar before you get started with any of this because that's going to help you determine the best targeting um, for this specific ad. Once you have this all set up, you can build your ad. You have the name of the ad, the brand name that appears, the headline, um, the website URL that you're sending to if that's the objective, the delivery, and then with the creative that you do, you need to create a specific portrait creative. You can do that inside of Canva or other um, editors. Canva is really, really simple and, and easy to use. Um, so for that reason, I like 
that in general. It's just this template. It so depending on what your business has and what your company has as far as resources for editing things, um, Canva is a really really easy way to go. Once you're done with that, you hit review and publish, and then you manage the results inside of Snap Ads here. So I hope that was helpful and useful in general. I think that if I was giving advice to any of my clients in general, I suggest going with Instagram far greater than going with Snapchat, if, especially if time is limited and there are limited resources. And if they did really want to get into Snapchat, I would say using Instagram stories and repurposing that content to put on Snapchat would be the way to go. But I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Was this helpful? Do you use Snapchat? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to see if you're using Snapchat, be sure and you're using it for business, be sure to comment below with your Snapchat handle so we can find you. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit a thumbs up, give me a comment below, and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.